Hey guys, as you might know, murder mystery party this murder mystery murder mystery party this mystery. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Guess what we're doing today? I mean, I guess you can see it in the title. We are recreating my first ever spoopy look that was ever on my channel. It was a get ready with me for a murder mystery party that I went to that was Halloween themed and it was on a train and it was really really fun and I took it as an opportunity to just kind of channel all of my ambiguous feelings of artistic inspiration at the time. In the video which is from 2014 you guys it's four years old. Throughout this video, you'll hear me say three because YouTube says three years ago until it actually hits that date. But you guys, this is actually like four months after I started my channel. <laughs> so this is the first ever, ever, ever like fun, artsy, get ready with me that I ever did on my channel. And today we are just taking a new spin on it. I wanted to go back and do maybe what 2014 Khaki probably had in mind when she set out to do this look. So guys, follow along with me. It's gonna be really fun. I'm super happy with the way that it turned out. And I'm gonna pull the typical beauty guru thing here and say, if you wanna see how I got this look, just keep watching as if you're not already here. <laughs> But just keep watching. <laughs> All right, so let's queue up the video and get her going here. A Halloween murder mystery party this last weekend. Okay, so we're starting out with some foundation and some highlighter. I was using the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. God bless me and my one foundation that I owned. And I was using a like K-Beauty liquid highlights. So I think I'm gonna go in with kind of a full coverage foundation and some of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Finish to give myself kind of the highlight base that I think I was going for in the original video. I'm going to go in with the Natasha Denona Foundation X all over my face with a Sigma Edge Kabuki. I just ordered so many brushes. I told you guys I was going to. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to educate myself on brushes. And so I just ordered a ton of brushes because you guys know I'm learning alongside you. So I'm going to go in with, like I said, some of the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. And I'm using that to kind of highlight my whole eye area right here. The whole thing is a play on kind of I don't know, my inner self, which is a deer character. I, all the way through college, used to dress up. Any opportunity I got, I would make myself a set of antlers. It sounds really kinky. It's not kinky, I promise. But I used to really dig on just the uh, imagery and the kind of like playing with gender and stuff like that of of the whole, you know, putting on antlers. Because everybody like was quick to point out, they're like, oh, you know, you like to make deer costumes, but you always have antlers. Like you're always a buck. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Everybody tried to gender my costume, I guess. And uh, it never really seemed to be a big deal to me, but a lot of my art in college and like I have, you can't see it right now, but like next to me, I have a screen print of a buck. I have a buck on the wall. Um, I have antlers over there and you will see the headpiece. I still have the headpiece from three years ago that I used for this look. But you guys know I can't resist a good art project and so I added more to it because more is more and I just decided to lean into my too much jean. And I'm going to now go in with some of the concealer from Makeup Revolution, the Conceal and Define. I did just order this foundation. So Hallie who requested it and then pretty much anybody else who's been mentioning, uh, you know, excited about it coming out. I did order it today. I ordered it in two colors because they did not have it at my local Ulta. So I didn't get to shade match myself. I was kind of annoyed. So. We'll see. Also, just a little bit of tea, a little bit of tea, because it's a Friday. I just watched Tati's review on the Emily edit. <laughs> you guys, I mean, I'm able to laugh at it now, but when I first saw all those really negative comments and like this army of like Emily's viewers like coming for me in the comments, when I really didn't think that it was like that bad or mean or even negative of a video like they just I don't know they just came for me and now I watch Tati and of course Tati doesn't watch me and so she just happened to use very 
very similar shades in the palette to do her eye look that I chose. It was a very berry colored look and she had equal difficulty. Like she just found that they were difficult to spread and I chalked that up to user error. I was very mea culpa about it. Like I'm not a makeup artist. This probably is a really beautiful palette. The colors are there. Like this is really, really pretty. Kudos to her for putting this stuff together. This is really inspired, whatever. But watching Tati do it and have so much difficulty, I was like, all right, all right. Like maybe it is a little bit the palette. And then I scrolled down to the comments and everyone was coming for her the same way that they came for me. Oh, I know that this sounds really naive because I should know this by now. I should know the comment sections are fraught with this kind of thing. But for some reason, like I said in last week's video, like it, it's always different when it's you. But when I read those comments where they said, you know, I think that you even grimacing in your thumbnail is unfair to Emily. I was just like, man, like you can't cut anybody any slack, can you? It, it's, it's kind of a double standard. How if you bristle at any kind of criticism, people are like, why can't you take criticism? But if you offer any kind of negative criticism towards something that somebody likes, they freak out and they can't take the criticism, even though it's not even something that they did. I'm sure Emily wouldn't want people hating on her behalf on people's videos. Anyway, I just found that to be really interesting. I related in a certain way and you know, while I don't, I don't enjoy watching Tati get hate, that is not my point at all. My point is that I was like able to relate to Tati in that moment. I was like, wow, okay, like this is actually just a normal occurrence of getting traffic on something. So I'm kind of crossing over some rites of passage on my channel, I guess. All right, so I definitely belabored that more than I should have, but I will link this brush below, you guys. I'm obsessed with it. Look at this like airbrushed finish that it gives your concealer. It's one of the easiest concealer brushes I've ever, ever used. And I've never thought of a concealer brush as being a distinct thing that needed to exist, but this thing is stinking cool. It does a lot of the work for me. All right, let's go back to the video. My skin, and now I'm going in with my MAC powder to cover all of my imperfections and kind of just whitewash everything. Okay. <laughs> highlighting, I go in with MAC Studio Fix Press Powder and I put it all over my entire face. So what was the point? <laughs> like, we're gonna be a lot more conscientious than that about maintaining and preserving some of the glow here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit just like my chin and some of the areas that tend to get a little bit greasier with the Thrive Powder. And then around my eyes, I'm just gonna use the Banana Powder from Too Faced because she just preserves a lot more of the glow. As usual, this is not in the tutorial, but I'm going to give just my foundation layer a little spritz with primer spray when you guys ask why I do this. I find that, first of all, this is a way lighter weight spray than a finishing spray, so it dries really fast and it's in my mouth right now and it's really not a very good taste. Blah. But anyway, the other thing that it does is I feel like it sets everything down. It's less likely to move around when I start putting blush and bronzer and highlighter and stuff on. I'm just going to take all this down the neck just a little bit. As I've completely lost my fake tan, the Natasha Denona is just a little bit dark for me. The look I'm going for is kind of a woodland witchy princess fairy situation. And so pale, pale princess with a pale. Forever. I have used the word situation when I can't find the word. I'm very sorry to all humans future and past. <laughs> I will end up drawing more freckles on later on, but I want to start with a really perfect surface. I have a lot of acne. This is a highlighter that I got from my last Q box, and it doesn't have exactly the same texture. Oh, sweet Jesus. I didn't realize. I put the liquid highlighter on after the powder. Oh, that is, uh, I wouldn't do that now. <laughs> Oh yeah, just rub it in with my fingers. Okay, I'm starting by kind of basing my whole eye area with white, just kind of like whitewashing it out. I want to actually start with a primer. So I'm going in with the Angel Eyes primer right now from Luscious Cosmetics, and I'm going to use this a little bit more generously than I normally would, because we're going to be putting eyeshadow kind of 
all around here. I'm gonna go for way more of a look. I really, I feel like this look, it, it's just amateur hour. And I don't, I don't want to say that like that's a bad thing. I think that a lot of times like James Charles will make these videos where he's like judging my first tutorial and it was like a year ago. You know, he, he hasn't been, he like blew up so fast. And granted, he's 19 so a year ago is like more of his life than it is of my life. But at the same time, like I'm not gonna sit here and lampoon myself because I think that that insinuates that I think that I'm amazing now, <laughs> which isn't the case either. But I think that I'll be able to look back on this in a few years and go, man, Khaki, good thing you bought that $5,000 camera. <laughs> this is definitely not the order I would have done things in before, is to do the eyes before I do any of the blush or contour, but that is what 2015 Khaki did, and so that's what we're going to do today. I create a kind of fairy-like, ethereal effect, and I'm bringing out my favorite, my chocolate bar, and this is a matte white. I just threw that chocolate bar palette out, y'all. I kept it way too long. Sorry about that. This is sort of solidifying that white on top of the shimmery and from my chocolate bar. So what I did was I wanted to show differentiation between a white and a shimmer kind of a round map that sort of blended in. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take a white eyeshadow and sort of base everything around here. And then I'm going to kind of blend that out into a highlight around that. So... <laughs> I never thought I was going to use this again because I hated it. But this is the look we're going for today. So we are going to use the Revolution Luxury Baking Powder in Ghost. And that is what I'm going to use to put some white around my eyeballs. right in the crease. It's fine. I do it today. It's fine. And I'm going to build on that even further, but this is sort of a jumping up and then stark contrast against the dark. Now I'm going in with this really deep kind of shimmery taupe color. Okay, this is where we're going to start taking some liberties because I don't really love the way that it turned out. I think I didn't really understand the way eyeshadows worked at the time, the way that you need to actually put pigment where it goes and then blend around it instead of layering it all the time. I kind of layered it the way that you would like, you know, a painting medium or something. It all ended up very muddy. So we're going to take a much more measured approach to this. I am going to dust a little bit of this off so that we can have an even playing field. And what? palette do I want to work in? It needs to be something with some really high saturation browns. What do you guys think? Safari? I think Safari. Everybody get out of the way. Safari is here, okay? Another reason I'm choosing to take these liberties right now is because TBH the quality of this video is so low that I really can't tell what I'm doing <laughs> now in hindsight. I'm going to start with Tamarind right here. This is the, oh man, what a pretty color. And that's going to be our very exaggerated transition shade. And I'm using the big, fat, fluffy brush that we were just using for the white. Building that color. I think what I thought I was going for at the time was a cut crease. I didn't know that that was what it was called, but I think that's what I was going for. It was just like the gradient above the lid and then a cut crease on the lid that was very light colored. So maybe that's what we'll do today. I'm not even going to say I'm an expert in doing a cut crease now, but... I don't know, I've got a lot of confidence, so that's got to count for something, right? All right, so that is a nice transition shade that's like most of my eye. And then we're going to basically just kind of blend up in a really exaggerated way up into the eyebrows. So I'm going to take a flat brush and I'm going to lay down Aya, which is the sort of, it's a, it's a, it's a beige. which could go really nicely with like magenta. We'll see. So I'm going to go in with Lotus, which is probably my favorite color on the whole palette. We're gonna do my little Real Techniques guy in that shade. 
All right, so that is Lotus. I want to take that little brush that I love, this from Makeup Geek. I love this little brush. And I'm gonna start building a pretty exaggerated crease with the shade Masai, I guess. I don't know, I wanna bring some magenta into this. going in with Malia just because I can't help myself. I just need this to be blended. Malia is that like lightest shade. It's sort of like a beige, but it's a little bit more pink. And then I'm actually going to take Desert Date right here. I like this, I like this shade and I want to bring it in here and kind of, yeah, build a little bit more brown into this look. It's just a little too rosy. That's better. I like that better. All right, I'm gonna go all over the lid with Aya right here, and I'm gonna do that with a flat brush. And what we end up with is kind of a soft cut crease. Now I'm going to go in with a very tiny brush, and I'm actually gonna cut the crease. I know, I know, I'm not very good at this kind of stuff, we're gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna go in with Voodoo on this small tapered blending brush from Sigma. Just, just the tip, really. All right, now I'm going to kind of build a similar thing underneath the eye while kind of leaving the white spot on the inside. I'm probably gonna zoom through this because we're just going to kind of mirror this on the bottom. Actually, I know it looks insane, but this is very much the look that I kind of went for in the original video. It'll come together with lashes and everything like that. I am gonna take a tiny pencil brush here and just really trace this. The next thing we're gonna do is add some texture. We want some some shimmer. So I'm going to go in with the Natasha Super Glow, Natasha, Natasha Denona Super Glow. I'm going to use that on my actual, you know, highlight points here and a little bit more exaggerated. Kind of fill in this gap right here with that. All right, I'm going to go into the Makeup Revolution Soap X palette and really pull a pearly shade out of here. This is the shade. They're not on there. And we're going to go all over the lid here with this. She's not giving me all my hopes and dreams right now, but it's okay. I'm gonna go in with my pinky into the actual white shade in this palette, which I really appreciate that she has a white shade. And I'm going to highlight my brow bone. Now let's do a little tiny brush for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I need, I need precision here. Go in with our little flat brush here, because what we're going for here is high contrast, right? I mean, yes, we want the gradient, we want it to be blended, but the contrast needs to be there. It's one of those things that it's almost like stage makeup. You want it to be able to see, be seen from space. And I'm also going to kind of fill in my inner corner with that. I'll still put some shimmer on the inner corner, but I want to really get some white in there first. And I'm also going to kind of bring it up and kind of trace the other side of the cut crease just a little bit. 
I don't want it to get muddy. And let's take it underneath as well, but I'm gonna spray it because I don't want it going everywhere. All right, let's see what 2015 khaki does. So this is my incredibly quick brow routine. We're gonna do brows now. I just do my normal brow routine, apparently. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going in with the Audrey pencil. I mean, this isn't what I did in that video, but I'm going to do my brow routine like I normally would. I'm gonna probably take some liberties, though. All right, that's sloppy, but let's work it out. I keep skipping on this because I have to get so close oh, to the we're doing eyes. to use this, but I'm drawing a very defined line around my eyes with a white eyeliner pencil that you might remember from my first cue box. Okay. And this is actually a lip liner pencil from NYX. All right, I did not end up liking that particular way of applying the white liquid eyeliner around my eyes. I don't think that it was necessarily the effect that I wanted to achieve. So I have my NYX white eyeliner here and I'm going to use this to rebuild my waterline on the bottom but I think that's about it. Oh now it's in my eyebrow. Well welcome to me. See that just adds this little like oh, I'm a deer like I don't know. <laughs> that's about all I want to do with that. I'm going to probably use it to draw freckles eventually but Oh, that's definitely like in my eye now. I'm gonna leave that like that for now. We can kind of scratch things away afterwards. Speaking of scratch things away. Then I draw on my little woodland deer nose. This is definitely very vintage khaki and I am not ashamed of it at all. So after hunting around for a while to see what I could use as my nose pigment, I found this Groundwork Pro Longwear Paint Pot from MAC. And I'm going to use that and then I will probably add some dimension to it using some eyeshadow. Little deer nose! ...that I am using on my nose to create kind of an effect of, you know, a deer or any other kind of woodland creature just to make me look a little bit less human. And the best part about this is it's kind of tacky, so I can build on it later with a little bit of shadow. I did that! It also blends really well. I'm using that same spudger. All right! That's what you would call it, that's what you would call it in paint. That's cool! That's like... I, I didn't realize I had such good instincts back then. So I'm taking some brown shadow on that same brush, which is dirty, but mm, hope for the best here. And I'm just going to add some dimension. Still in the Sofex palette, which I enjoy great leg right now. I'm going to use a like light tan right here so that we get the little nose. I almost want to add some of that brown up here. I'm not going to. I just like when stuff kind of goes together and all the deeps are the same deep but I'm going to resist. And because it's me now in 2018 doing this, I'm going to also use a white to highlight the tip here so that we get even more of a distorted effect as if my nose is a little deer nose. Like that. I'm actually going to take that down the bridge of the nose too. And I think that, you know, we haven't done any uh, bronzing and contour yet or anything, but um, I'm probably going to contour the sides of my nose in a pretty exaggerated way, too. But we're doing things in the order of 2015 khaki, so hmm, I don't know what she's up to. Terms, and I just put my two bronzers from Sephora, and I'm not even bothering to blend it that much. It's glamorous. Well, I feel like I might have gone over because... Okay, 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 okay. We're finally going to bronze! <laughs> I'm, like, really excited. I know it's going to end up kind of exaggerated, so I'm going to start with... Rhea from Thrive, which is probably the darkest I'm comfortable going on my skin. And I'm gonna use the Sigma Curved Kabuki. This thing is dope because it actually carves for you. Now it can be a lot. I mean, that's definitely, you, you could use this as a cream or a really exaggerated powder contour, but it, oh, 
hugs your cheek in this really fantastic way. Look at that. Boom. And like clean, clean. I love that. I mean, yes, this is, you know, very drag looking. It's not what I would normally go for, but I like things that were kind of created out of necessity. Like someone was like, this needs to exist. I'm just gonna use it to buff a little bit on my forehead, buff just a little bit now that there's no product on the brush or very little. And then I will take the Too Faced Blushing Bronzer, the Pink Leopard, and just kind of blend a little bit. And it adds a tiny bit of shimmer. Um, I'm going to also use this, like I said, to, uh, the word is contour. I'm going to contour my nose with it. I'm going to use a little eyeshadow brush to do that. I never contour my nose because I feel like it looks so phony baloney on me. And I think that there's still some pink left on this brush. Whoops. I'm actually going to kind of blend that out with a bigger fluffy brush here. I like that. I like that. I like that. Okay. going to kind of go a little bit just underneath my lip as well. We're really just exaggerating all the contours of my face here. And now I'm going to go back in with my high beam and just re-accentuate some spots that I feel like I might have gone over. So I do what I'm giving myself. Okay. So I do the high beam again. And I don't, I'm not a big fan of high beam. I go in with highlight and then I go back in with blush. We're going to go the other way around. I'm just going to use a little bit of a pink blush and I'm going to actually use Rosie from Thrive today. It's actually a Thrive blush brush. This isn't usually my go-to blush brush. I actually prefer these for putting on foundation, but I want this to be sort of exaggerated. I think that one of the biggest things that I noticed, like the old one to now, is that I kind of just trusted all my brushes a little too much. <laughs> I just am like all over my face. And that's fine if you're just putting on a little bit of makeup on a regular basis. You know, it's just like an everyday thing. I've definitely gotten used to throwing on a face of makeup. But if you're going for a look like this where it's playing with a lot of highlight and contour, you really need to keep the colors where you put them. Then, Khaki goes in with some liquid highlight, but you guys know what time it is. It's time for some Fenty. Oh yeah. All right. Um, do we put this on with my finger? Do we put it on with a brush? Does it really matter? It's so beautiful. So let's take a fluffy highlighter brush, I guess. Yeah. And just see, you know, let's just see what we end up with. I want to hit just the high points here. Might need to go in with a smaller brush and really go in on my eyes. God, this thing is everything. I'm gonna do a little bit on my lids. Kind of go the extra mile there. But I don't want this stuff to just take over. I think that it's very easy to just cover your face in this stuff and call it a day. Really dark brown, just because like I said, one more time, I kind of go into painter mode and I just grab whatever color that I can get a little bit more dimension and put a little bit of that in the inner corner of my eyes. Oh God, I just, I start putting this copper eyeliner everywhere and I hate it. And I mean, when I say everywhere, I mean my lips too. <laughs> it's, it's not a good look. So I'm going to go for a very nude lip. I'm going to conceal my lips. <laughs> yes, you heard right. I'm going to conceal my lips with a very way too pale for me concealer, which is the ColourPop No Filter. I hate this stuff. I didn't even end up doing a full review on it because I wore it one day and it broke up on me so badly. I think I'm just gonna throw a little bit of Tiptoe from ColourPop. Just soft, 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 yeah. And then I actually wanna take like a darker shade and put that in the middle. This is, I've never used this before. <laughs> Literally never used this before. This is Spiced Petal from Flower Beauty. And I'm just gonna throw that right in the center. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Let's see what Khaki does. Don't really know why I just 
really like to be effective. I've done this a couple of times so that those dots stay small because it's a really, you can see, I are a little perfect. Okay. Alright, so 2015 khaki lined all the way around her eyes with black. Then put on a bunch of freckles and stuff, which I am going to do, and then uh, just put on regular mascara. I am going to draw a bunch of freckles on my face. I'm going to do a liquid liner, but I'm going to do it off camera because otherwise we'll be here all day. And then I'm going to put some lashes on, but let's do the liner and lashes first and then we'll do the freckles. Cool? Cool. See you in a second. Okay guys, so I have my liner and my lashes. On, and mascara and little clumpies <laughs> and I'm doing a little bit of cleanup work around my eyeballs because even if I get it like 99% perfect with the liquid eyeliner that 1% I still gotta clean it up and it's still annoying but I feel like a cartoon character right now in like the best way possible now it's time for the final touch well not the final touch but the final touch on the makeup and I'm going to go in with a white liquid eyeliner and kind of draw freckles that are going to mimic the dappling on a deer or something, but also kind of bring my freckles back into, into play. But before I do that, you guys, I feel like this is when I should hit it with some finishing spray because <laughs> I don't want to make the little freckles run down my face. So I've got a brand new thing of the Urban Decay All Nighter. Anyway, let's draw some freckles. <laughs> touch of like highlight in a couple of places. So this is going to be like a cartoon highlight kind of. Okay, and the only thing that this needs is uh, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. So it is all but impossible to maintain the illusion of my background and get this whole thing in frame. So this is what the headpiece looks like in its entirety, but I'm gonna zoom you guys in so you can see the face and everything and how it kind of all fits together. So if for any reason you guys actually want to try this look, let me know. I will talk to you guys about how I do my flower crowns if you guys want me to. I'm really not sure that that's a video that would do well on my channel. <laughs> Most people be like, I don't care, but maybe I can run a clinic in it. I don't know, whatever you guys want. But I, like I said, in the past few years, have just let this kind of sit, you know, as decoration in my office. But I added some more stuff to it so that I can make it a little bit more current, a little bit more kind of like, I don't know, it's almost like I added a little bit of lichen to it, like it's aged a little bit. I don't know. Follow me down this rabbit hole, you guys. <laughs> but this is the final look. This to be compared to what we end up with from classic. Classic khaki. Venus khaki. So this is as well as you can actually see what I end up with back in that day and while I still think that was a pretty good look I think that this is probably more what I was going for at the time it's all in good fun I'm not wrong back in 2015 I'm not right now I just think this is probably more what I had in mind even at the time I just didn't really have the skills to back it up yet or the materials to be able to experiment on this level so this is my updated 2018 woodland witchy makeup look and i hope that this was a more valuable tutorial for you guys because i think that that was really not a very valuable tutorial cheers to learning cheers to having been on youtube this long it's pretty crazy and i hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did give it a thumbs up if you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel guys hit the button down below and subscribe i would love it if you guys did thank you so much for joining me in this first really halloweeny video I think that the pumpkin spice palette really served a purpose of kind of ushering in October. But if you guys have any other requests for some cool looks, or if you just are in the mood to see more creative looks from me this October, let me know in the comments below because that can be arranged. I have so many palettes to dig around in and play with. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I love you so very much. Thank you for joining me today. I will see you in the next